Jane, welcome. So nice to see you. I'm speaking to Jennifer Stefanik today from Self Image Styling. And Jen, I'm super excited to talk to you because I know that you have a background in the beauty industry and I know you're moving into a different kind of business model and it's like exciting times for what you're, mm -hmm. what you're trying to do. And yeah, yeah. so um, let's just go. Thanks for, thanks for joining me for a chat today. Thank you. Yeah, I suppose um, COVID's really forced me to, to kind of look at things and make things more virtual than um, in the past, you know, before it was a lot more hands on and now it's like, okay, well, what, what kind of things have I learned over the years and how can I bring this to people everywhere? So it's, it's been, it's been really interesting times. Um, really makes you, yeah, think more. So yeah. So, yes. and find a, find yeah. a way of like working, with it, like working with yeah. it. Like, what can we do to just keep, keep going and, um, finding different avenues for opportunities and how to reach people. Okay. Yeah. yeah, totally. And I think everybody's got something to contribute. And, um, and I, I feel like now that we're actually forced to stay in more, it, it's really coming through. People are looking at, okay, what have I got? What can I, what can I, what can I do to make a difference? And um, I'm, I'm finding more and more. It's just, it's just coming. I'm, I'm, I'm writing a lot and I'm, I'm creating programs and yeah, it's just a completely different space. So as I said, it's exciting. It is, and it's kind of like a reflection of your business, like because you've been heavily involved in the beauty industry and worked yeah. out a long time. So it has been more about the external, and because we're all kind of internal, and your business is going in that direction anyway, right? About right. finding that self value within yourself and expressing that along with yeah. your beauty and image. Yeah. So, yeah, tell us, tell us more about it, Jen. Okay, well, I mean, I have, I have literally been in, I call it the glamour industry because it's all, it's, it has been about the surface. Like, you know, I started out probably in my early 20s. I was looking at, well, I don't even know where to begin. Maybe I can go right back. Um, so originally I was going to be a famous anthropologist and I did complete that degree at uni. Um, but I remember thinking to myself, I don't want to just be sitting down and researching and then submitting a paper and then everybody just all these academics just sitting there and completely, you know, pulling apart all my arguments, you know, it's just like, here's your life work and everyone's just like attacking all these, you know, looking at it from different angles. I was just like, is that what I want to do? I don't know. Um, and then, um, and then I was like, I'm just, I, I just wanted to travel. So I went traveling and um, one of my aunties from uh, one of my, well, my mum's brother, my uncle, he married he woman he married a woman from from the Amazon, and I remember her knowledge, yeah, her knowledge on um, on just plants and just, she she was just so attuned to nature. It was really fascinating, and I was like, that's it, that's what I want to do. I want to become a naturopath. So <laughs> I've always been really kind of this is what I want to do, and life just throws something completely different at me. Um, so, so anyway, so I went and studied naturopathy for a couple of years and I think I'd just been studying too much and, you know, kind of got to midpoint, you know, I'd done all the herbs and the, the nutrition and the, you know, anatomy and physiology. And I think remedial massage was something that we were supposed to have back then. I don't know if we need it now as, or well, I don't know if naturopaths need it anymore, but right. that was, we had to do that as a core component. And um, I was finding that I was picking up all these extra modules and doing reflex. So I did the whole diploma of reflexology instead of just the elective. And anyway, so it was, it was just, I was like, okay, stop. Just go and get yourself a job and take a year off and you can come back to this. So went out, started working and I was working in two day spas. And one of the owners said to me, if you learn beauty, I'll give you all the work you want. And I just went, Oh, okay, easy enough. And, and that's how I got into it. And just, and I just found that because I had this background in naturopathy and I understood the active ingredients in, in product, I was just, I was very good at sale, you know, sales and, and I had the massage side. So facials were really, you know, like I just, I could, it just flowed naturally. And when you flip a person over and you're speaking to them face to face, you just develop a relationship and, you know, with, with your clients that you get to know. Um, and it just became easy. It just didn't feel like I was working. It was fun. It was, you know, it was exciting. And so 
I went from there into my own business. I had um, a salon, but it's been a, like a shopping mall or shopping center. And then I had a street, um, a street business. And um, that was, you know, it was, it was busy. <laughs> but you learn a lot and you see a lot. And I, I got to a point where I was like, there's something more than, than just this. You know, it's, it's like there's more to it. Um, and I need to go deep because I could see there were a number of women who would, who would come in and they come in really regularly and they get all their spray tans and they get all their microdermabrasions and they get all their peels. But sometimes I'd, I'd find people who came too often and they were just looking for the, the problem. And, um, and I was like, it's, 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 I can give you 50 of these treatments. It's not going to make the difference that you're after. Um, anyway, then I, I, I um, sold the business and came back to Sydney and I, I was like, oh, I was also painting at the same time that I started my business. Those kind of went hand in hand, um, which was really interesting um, because what it taught me about business was that I didn't like the traditional model. Um, I really like more dynamic, you know, interactive. You can swap and change. And the reason that the art process taught me that was because um, I would create a body of work and it was all over my salon walls, you know, just had, a, had this theme of, you know, all these, all these relaxed women. And, you know, um, it was kind of, um, oh my gosh, what's his name? Um, what's his name? One with all the gold. Yes. I can't even remember his name. My gosh. Um, Super famous. Clint. Clint. Oh, yes. Clint. Oh, <laughs> yes. like the woman in gold. Inspired. Yeah. And I yeah. just had all this, of this really beautiful kind of romantic um all these all these artworks really like strong design and all over my all over my salon walls and i remember thinking to myself i'd really like to um like i like this process because you essentially do the the, the body of work and then you move you know you find what's good in it you find what didn't work and then you evolve what's working you, you keep working on what's working and you you let go of, of the stuff that's not working or, or you try and work out what wasn't working about it and you go, okay, well, I need to adjust this or shift this or whatever. And then you move on to the next thing that inspires you. Whereas having that old business, that traditional business model, you know, where it's like you're in this certain, you know, this room, this location, this one spot, all of your energy, all of your resources, all of your time, all of your effort goes into this one space. And because of that, it kind of keeps you stuck. It's like doing one artwork for the whole of your life, you know? I mean, that could be a great thing, but um, it, 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 it felt limiting for me. And I realized that was, that was one thing that I gained from that, with that whole experience was, was that, yeah, that's not the model that I wanted. So <laughs> sold the business, came up to Sydney and, um, and I went, you know, I want to use the, 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 the painting side of things and, and still, I still want to have my hand in the, in the game. And um, so I started doing more freelance hair and makeup and, yeah, because that would just, it just made sense. Um, and I was I also studied my um, image consulting training then. And, um, yeah, so just went into, uh, what did I do there? just a lot of the thing I liked the most because I did I did some um some tv stuff and video clips I like that um video clips and um I also did um like my, my favorite was more the like when you collaborate for editorial type things because you right. get different you get different artists and they all they all come together and they bring their skill sets and um that that was that was the most fun because you're not stopping and starting like you are in film. I just, I just found that to be the most, most, yeah, most fun. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I got to that and then um, I was like, well, what am I going to do with all of this? Um, and, and at the same time I was, I was getting more involved in um, spiritual work, you know, the meditation practice and started getting a regular yoga and meditation practice. And that just brought me, inwards and started making me realize that okay you can have this external you know what's conceived you know considered to be beauty um but it the real beauty comes and it, it, it's it's reflected and it shines from mm. within um and 
even if you, your makeup is on point, even if, you know, the outside's perfect, um, perfect. Um, yeah. You can't, like you can't be. You can't. You know, like you could have. You can't fill this up with that. Yeah. 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 And I mean, you look at a baby, it's, it's born naked and it is beautiful and it is perfect and it is whole, you know, so it's, I don't know why we moved away so far from that, but you know, like it's what, what I suppose I'm looking at doing more now is being able to look at, at your self image, your self concept as being the main thing that drives what you see in the reflection, you know, in, in the mirror, um, because it's ultimately your self concept that, will dictate what you see in that, in that mirror. Definitely. And, you know, when you think about like, when you say like, what, like, how do we become this from the baby to now, like putting too much external pressure on our external self. And then like what that image on TV is now with all the like women, what, especially in those reality shows, it's crazy. Like what, where did that, where did that become a thing? And it's just gone way off the charts. Like they look, I don't know. They sound like people. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of that, that is actually be. a lot of actually Sorry. a lot yeah. of the techniques. Yeah, those techniques are for drag queens because it's it's um right. yeah. Whenever I've done drag makeup, I've had to do those types of techniques. It's you know the whole Kim Kardashian thing with the big yeah. you know lashes. At least it's 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 that's kind of died. This you know it's no longer the main trend. Thank goodness. I feel like I can breathe again. <laughs> Uh, but, but yeah, but it was all about how to manipulate your face so that you look more feminine. Um, oh wow! That, that whole yeah, so that's so I didn't know that. Embracing or enhancing, it was just about. I mean, you know, just yeah, really, really pushing the the. I suppose the light, dark shadow, um, you know, net lengthening of the lashes, just really. What is the female? You know, yeah, like the Barbie yeah. accentuating. Mm. Wow, that's yeah, really, that's really important. interesting because that's they they look like blow up dolls or they look like drag queens. They do. It yeah. looks like that because it's so far from just looking like a normal person. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, I yeah. can, and like I appreciate that p people like different things, and that's a look, and maybe people just like that look. But is it? But do you think those people are fulfilled inside? I just can't imagine you feel good about yourself if you're doing all that. I don't know. Or do you feel good because you, you've done all this and it makes you feel better. You can go out into the world because you are expressing yourself how you want to be expressed. What do you think? It depends on why, they're do why, why people are doing it. Because mm. if, you, if you want to try it just for fun and just to, to push your creative limits or whatever, like I see a lot of teenagers, I've worked with teenagers in... Um, um, I did some I did some voluntary work with um, some girls at um, at like a like a refuge uh, yeah type of refuge okay and um, some of them wanted to do some work experience and wanted to know more about um, becoming a makeup artist so so I'd gone there and and given them some pointers and I could see that a lot of them were like looking to looking to YouTube videos or Instagram videos and and you know like oh yeah I know what I'm doing you know. <laughs> and doing this whole look and for me I was like but you're missing the fact that you have such beautiful skin when you're 16 it's glowing it's dewy it's all these beautiful things so if you actually pulled back the foundation and showed your face you know like just you know like foundation's just there to help to balance out the the unevenness of the canvas you know like of your skin so if you've got redness or or blemishes or things like that that's that's when you're using your foundation just to kind of give you a, a even surface to begin with um but when you've got nothing to really hide like anyway yeah um, no I'm, I'm it really it really is yeah missing the point um that you are so beautiful when you're yeah that age you don't realize you, don't realize it. No. <laughs> you have to get to your 40s to go damn it <laughs> but you know my son my son's 17 and um, he, he doesn't get like the makeup and everything on girls and why they dress with like their everything hanging out. And, you know, he doesn't, he's just not, hasn't matured to like that kind of thing yet. So um, he, he was telling me about a girl that had all this makeup on at, at, at school and 
I was like, and she's pretty? And he's like, well, you can't tell. She's got so much makeup on them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was so <laughs> funny. It's like, if only someone told me that, like, that, you know, I, yeah, it's funny to hear, like, the male perspective on, on that kind of thing. And <laughs> Yeah. But, I mean, at the same time, it can be it can be an expression of they want to experiment and they want to try these things. So there's there's nothing wrong with being creative about it and just wanting to explore it. Or it's like I don't know, in your home, you can have a table without a tablecloth, or you can have you know, like when you look at your home, you you do put time and effort into decorating oh, that. Definitely, um, and, and, um, or your bedroom even. Yeah. yeah, or you might remodel things, and you know. But and there's and that's not seen as something bad. So it's just no, it's just it's at all. enhancing what you've got, really. Yeah. That's 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 the focus. And it's yeah. kinda of like that double double side to it because as women there's that pressure to look a certain way. But as women we're fortunate that we can do that. Like a guy can't put eyeliner on and go out without being of a <laughs> without not being masculine, you know, like without being a, it's kind of taking away your manhood, but being a female, we can like cover up the blemishes, put the foundation on, cover up the dark circles, and that's totally acceptable and and look fantastic. And we're lucky in that. Yeah. Way. Actually, you're fortunate. Uh, I, I, yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, I actually have worked with a number of cross dressers, and um, they they constantly tell me that it's like it's not fair. We don't get to dress up. We get, we have such limited options when it comes to getting dressed and you know what we want to do. So yeah, it, yeah. it's fascinating. It's it really is. Fascinating. It is mm. fascinating. Wow, cross yeah. too. Yeah, Jane, you're out there. You're you're <laughs> in the progressive world of, <laughs> of dressing for sure. So, it's, yeah. so self image styling is definitely more about beauty and clothes. So, tell us about how how you would transform transform someone internally. Like, what would be that? What would be the thing you do? So, a client comes to you. What what's the first thing you do to get them to look inside of themselves? It's really, it's really being able to access the, um, the being able to appreciate, like just, just being able to see the qualities, the skills, the, you know, the, the mental, physical, uh, even the spiritual, uh, I say spiritual in the, in the sense of you might've had, um, obstacles or challenges in your life. And when you can see how you've overcome them or what you've had to gain, what you've gained from those experiences, rather than just the, you know, seeing them as a negative imprint, um, just how you've grown and, and how you can now take that um, resilience into different, you know, other areas of your life. Um, and just how you, how you now are able to uh, view the world, you know, like do not, not view the world, well, I suppose view the world because you have a, a particular perception because of it, but also how you interact um, based on that background. Because you'll never, you will never find anybody else who, who will deal with different situations in exactly the same way as you because you're coming from a different perspective because of your, because of your background, because of your skill sets, because of where you've focused your attention. I mean, nobody knows why some people become, I don't know, butterfly, you know, enthusiasts. Um, you know, you, you know, like I remember yeah. going to Indonesia once and, and um, I got bitten by something um, when we were coming out of the water. Uh, something came and bit me and I was like, oh, I've got to get that checked out. And there was this guy that <laughs> that helped me out and he was staying on the island and he was, his his thing was looking at, at um, what do you call it? The the feces from from different animals. His, he, that was his thing. And that was his focus. And like, that would, <laughs> <laughs> would inform, you know, like yeah. such a fascination for this thing, you know, like, I don't know, like different people have different things, but like yeah. nobody can tell you that that's what you want to do or you don't want to do. You know, there's, there's just, there's things that you will gravitate to and it's almost like it comes through you. Mm. Um, and when you can tap into that and, and just see how valid it is, you start to see your, how valuable you actually are. Um, yeah. And I yeah. think a lot of the time look outside and, Oh, I wish I had that or I wish it could be like that. And, they're not, they're not seeing. If, if you listen to okay. successful people, that's why, mm -hmm. that's why I hear from them. Like when you get to that point, when you, uh, instead of that, I'm different, I'm trying to cover up my differences. Yeah. I embrace my differences and I express that into the world. That's your true value. I, I remember reading 
was I reading this? Or maybe I saw Oprah in a short interview that um, when she first became a news anchor, <clears throat> the the you know producer of the show said, "Look, you know, your eyes are too far apart, your mouth's this, your your jaw's not, you know, defined," and just picked away, picked apart what she looked like, and. She's like, well, then at that point, I knew, I realized I had to find value in other ways, that I'm valuable in different ways. It's not going to be the look. It's going to be what I, and look what she, she became in the world. I find that fascinating when people, exactly. do that, it's like they, yeah. instead of taking that as a negative and, you know, and then that driving her out of the space that she became so successful in, she just harnessed it in a different way. And um, yeah. 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 And I mean, she's still, she's still embraced the whole, you know, um, I see, I see her look now, you know, and so she's, she's gotten that inside part 150%. Yeah. Right. <laughs> totally covered. <laughs> and yep. then it becomes really easy to dress her and to, you know, uh, make sure that the, all the design elements, I suppose, for her, work for her um and it's 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 something like once you can start doing that with your wardrobe and your makeup and your hair it, it starts to all you, you just start to I suppose amplify who you are like it all comes together really really beautifully um mm. so really you know like your your hair makeup um styling it's 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 more about yeah it's more about who are you um, who do you want to show up as? What do you want to express um, based on whatever the I am concept is? So when I say I am concept, it's like I am and then what word are you sticking after that? You know, because um, that's going to create your your external world, essentially. Um, yeah, and so so based on that, I mean, I can't put somebody who likes to feel comfortable and casual but sexy into pearls or um, a, a form-fitting structured outfit because it's not them and it just makes them feel maybe, maybe too mature or whatever when they want to feel more modern and funky and edgy. Um, that's, that's the kind of thing that, that we're looking at much more. Jen, than, when people um, come to you, do you find, so if people come to you, do you find that um, there's people that are trying to fit a mould and can't find their place with it? Is that... That's what I'm hearing. Like that's yeah, yeah. There's that. Just, yeah. I, I also feel like a lot of people don't actually recognise what they've got. Like when you when you look at your wardrobe, it's it's choices you've made. You've made a, a choice, and then another choice, and then another choice, and then another choice, and all those choices end up in your wardrobe. Um, and a lot of the time, you make good choices, but you just you're just really bored with what you've got because you, you're doing things a particular way. You fall into habits. Everybody falls into habits. And, and you know, like I have, I have a fridge full of food, but I might just make certain number of recipes. Whereas a chef might come in and go, you know what, you could do that, 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 that with these ingredients that you've got in here. And, and I've got all these extra recipes. And so I suppose I go in and I go, you know what, you've got this. So I've actually organized myself. So I've got like this blue shirt, yeah, baby blue shirt, a blouse, sorry, and I've got, I mean, I've just taken this off and what have I got, these earrings, and then I'll pull my shoe off for you, and just these little funky, you know, um, shoes, and so if I change, if I just do a quick little accessories change, it's just accessories, but it's exactly the same um, base it's a neutral, it's, it's, this is a neutral shirt, last. So we're doing these earrings instead. Yeah, so just swi switching out some accessories more than yeah, people buying the clothes. Sudden, you've, got a, you've got a brand new look. Yeah, um, it's, it's true. Wait a second. You do. You, look, you see you what I'm saying? Like yes. it's, it's the same. And you look so different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I should put some uh, shoes on while I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah. So so that's. I need to fix this. But anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's it's just it's just saying 
there's so much potential that mm. you probably not you're not seeing it because you're not even a lot of people don't even know what they've got in their wardrobe a lot of the time they, they'll kind of go oh I forgot that was there oh, I forgot that was there because uh, it's kind of fallen to the back of the wardrobe but you do it's it's as I said it's like it's it's like your, your kitchen you, you fall into the same the same recipes because they're easy yeah definitely yeah. And, mm. and you just do the staple thing and yeah and just yeah. accessorizing changing your accessor accessories can change your look and that you don't yeah. have to go out and spend a whole fortune on like no. when you say you make choices and you make and they cost you money those choices and sometimes exactly they just right. don't pay off you invest <laughs> you invest in the choices that you <laughs> make with your relationships with the, you know everything you know like yeah. they yeah, and so it's about becoming more resourceful too. So once you can appreciate, so the program that I'm creating at the moment, the uh, that I'm about to launch, it's it's um it's looking at things to be um, appreciative of within yourself, within your wardrobe, within your makeup, and then moving into becoming more resourceful about it, um, and then you know looking at the principles and elements of style and then how you want to show up. But so it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, but really getting resourceful around what you've got and seeing the potential and maximizing it. Yeah. And showing up as the person you want to be, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I, you know, like for me, when I think about personal development and things I've done and you know how it can feel like trying to move a mountain to change yourself you know, when you just mm. come up against things and it's like just wanting to be, yeah, move that out of the way and let something else in. What do you think it is that makes people successful in, you know, that they get into personal development or they, you know, find a spiritual practice, but what is it that makes them change? Do you think it's just practice, motivation, a willingness to be open? But what do you, what yeah. was it for you on your journey? Like for me, I think it was... Um, I think it's like trying a whole lot of things, but I don't really recommend that either. <laughs> you, can <spend> a lot of, <laughs> you can spend a whole lot of time sifting through. It's like going to Vinnie's, right? And you're just like trying yeah. to find some, uh, I love op shopping, so I'm a big fan. Yeah. So, but yeah, and sometimes yeah. you go and yeah, you yeah. find some great some stuff. Really sometimes awesome. you just rummage around all day. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but I think it's, yeah, like that focus or determination or yeah, what do you think it is it takes to, to really like move that mountain let yourself be that express yourself you know well yeah. i think i think a lot of the time it's when things aren't working and you keep you know you might have tried really hard to make something successful or really hard to make something work and it's not working and you end up in some form of crisis mm. um where you're just like bang rock bottom and at the time you might think oh why is this happening to me this is so awful but it is that's really a lot of the time the beginning of okay i need to change um and that that's where you really learn your life lessons it's like okay i can't ignore this anymore i've been you know going along this path and just pretending everything's okay but it's not okay and i need i need to change um and so it's it's also about um awareness you know just just becoming aware of what what you're saying about yourself or how you're how you're responding or behaving um like once you start to become aware um you can actually go is that really true um is that how i want to be is you know it, it's and i think it, a lot of meditation makes you makes you realize that that's like okay i can't i can't continue <laughs> believing that if i want a happier outcome it, yeah that's so true you got to give up those mm. those habits that are just keeping you stuck um keeping yeah. a, a cycle of self-doubt and yeah unhappiness and and move forward and and i'm just curious because you've spent so much time in the beauty industry you must and and not not in a judgmental way just in more of a knowing way because you spent so much time in it you must meet people and just kind of sense where they're at do you like just by the way they put themselves together like do you ever um you know I, I i think people have different values and i don't think there's anything wrong with those values you know like some people are like i want i want this you know i want this thing because it it symbolizes status you know it might be a designer label item 
and what people like is what people like. That's the thing. You, there's nothing, there is literally nothing that you can do to make people not like that. So yeah. me imposing my, my, I suppose, more, judgment. More, on um, more someone that hasn't like put it together, not, not necessarily a style, like more like when they show up and they're just all a bit of a mess, you know, things are broken or stained or, you know, like, do you know? Like, so they're not valuing yeah things. like yeah right? yeah maybe they're not valuing themselves or um yeah i mean i guess it's not valuing valuing how you appear but is that like a reflection it's also a reflection of the internal world right that you're maybe not yeah i think that's yeah. where the, the inner that's, work is is, is yeah. probably more of a focus yeah um but i mean i think everybody's at different stages some people have, have spent a long time trying to be, trying to, trying to improve the interior than the exterior. Others have really focused on the external, but not looked within. And I guess that's, that's why I've wanted to create something like this because I have met a number of people, I think more through life <laughs> rather than. <laughs> And in your work? Because I found people who, you know, who would come and visit me a lot. They, they were just lovely. You know, they were happy. They were looking after themselves. They're generally quite happy, you know, just to improve something. Right. Um, so they come to improve something. But I, I have known people in my lifetime who have been fixated on surface. Um, right. You know, the, the surface and it's almost like I have attracted those kind of people into my life somehow I don't know maybe it's because I'm a little bit more grounded I think you kind of attract your opposite sometimes <laughs> I don't know <laughs> but I've had my own life lessons in that and I just I just feel like okay let's let's really draw the the less draw out the lessons I've gained through all of these experiences and just go okay <laughs> What have I gained from this? What what was the, the the benefit of interacting or dealing with that person? Like what was because there was a pull, you know, like there was like a, a pull. Like I think I think when it when somebody's completely externally focused, there's a lot more drama and it's actually really interesting. Um it's kind of fun and interesting. <laughs> um, you know, like that that drama that they, 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 they can be quite uh, charismatic people and, and it's just kind of blingy, you know, like bling, bling, bling. Um, whereas when you're grounded, you, it tends to be more kind of, you know, steady and, you know, I don't know. It, it's a bit more of an adrenaline rush with the, with the more surface only. Um, yeah, right. Anyway, it's, 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 been, it's been an interesting ride. <laughs> <laughs> and look, and that's totally like... I think like whatever um, you um, talking about perspective or what that thing that you want to do, like um, talking about the guy in Indonesia and you know, like why do people want to do things to do? And when you want to do a business or the work that you're attracted to, it is just that wanting to learn more, like learn. Um, like I, I love talking to people. That's why I want to do podcasting and, and talk to people because I'm just fascinated about why people do the things they do. So mm -hmm. is that, that whatever your business is, is that a reflection of, like you're saying, like, as, what I'm hearing is that you want to kind of understand people from that perspective of the inner and outer world and what drives yeah. them to be. Yeah. 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 Like what's driving them? Because when you, when you tap into what's driving you, you, you turn up more, you, you show who yeah. you are more um, and you're more excited about life. You're more, you know, you're, you're present, you're, your interactions are different you contribute because you've it, i feel like when you well when you when you meditate on something anything when you're meditating you you might be focusing on i don't know your breath the darkness whatever um and that's just helping you to become present in the moment when but you don't need to be sitting with your eyes closed for that it, when you're meditating it's focusing on one thing and really going for it um and so that keeps you in the moment and it, it, it makes your life experience more rich. Um, and so that's why you, you have more to contribute when you've, when you've done a solid meditation in that, in, in that area. Um, cause, cause all of a sudden it's like, well, I've been in this moment and I can, 
express it and contribute what I've, I've gained from this moment to many. Um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of, what was the question? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that was good. That was a half meditation. No, no, I, no, I hear what you say. Yeah. (laughs) We're just talking about why, like our business is a reflection of ourselves. Like, yeah, showing up in the way you want to show up and and contributing and the value. And like, you know, you're talking about the guy, um, checking out the theses in Indonesia. Like, I want to go and talk to that yeah. guy. Like, what, what's, <laughs> like, <laughs> why are you doing what you do? <laughs> but, I mean, um, that's very grounded, isn't it? <laughs> you can't get you more. <laughs> you, 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 you can't well get more grounded than that. Like, let's face it. <laughs> but, um, Jen, you know, I know we talked about psycho cybernetics, which I thought was a fantastic book. And I just, I wanted to yeah. read that. I thought it, I thought it was spot on about like yeah. self image. So, when the self-image is intact and secure, you feel good. When it is threatened, you feel anxious and insecure. When your self-image is adequate and one that can be wholesome and proud of, you feel self-confident. You feel free to be yourself and express yourself. You function at your optimum. When it is an object of shame, you attempt to hide it rather than express it. Creative expression mm-hmm. is blocked. You become hostile and hard to get along with. I was like, God, yeah. that's spot on. Hey, like mm-hmm. when you block it, when you cover it up, when you feel ashamed of it, which I think can mm-hmm. be that like real external thing. Oh, I've got this or I'm trying to, you know, do something to cover whatever um, or enhance it in some way. And yeah, but how that can be, how, yeah, being hostile and hard to get along with. Oh, I just thought that was so spot on. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of that is um, I also feel like, another part of the equation of not not valuing yourself is putting too much emphasis on on what you don't have based on what's out there um and comparing yourself and wishing that you had that thing that is obviously of some value to you but you're not valuing what what you've actually got what your assets are yeah like so you yeah and if you got, I mean, that I say thing. assets. I say the word assets. It sounds a little bit, I don't know, businessy. But um, it, ultimately, everyone's got everyone's got some core assets, um, physically, mentally, spiritually. Um, and when they can see what those are, that's when they really can. Like you can, you can form like a structure around it. You can create order around it, and then you can you can start to maximize it and. Anyone who's done well in life has maximized what they've got. And they, and it's just exactly that. It's just that value. Mm. Like, um, because you know, uh, and like from that psycho cybernetics about the plastic mm. surgery and, you know, that you change something about their looks and they still wouldn't, wouldn't see it. And, or maybe yeah. you get that thing and it doesn't bring you the joy and happiness because the only, the well of joy is internal. The, the, the freedom's internal, the peace is in, internal, it's all an inside job. And if you don't yeah. break that open and, and shine mm-hmm. it out and appreciate it and love it, it just can't be valued by anyone else anyway. So, yeah, yeah God, so true. So, Jen, yeah. what's next for you? So, you got, you got a course coming up, a book coming up, I believe. Yeah. What, yes, yes, what, yes. Um, the book is taking quite a while because yeah. there's so many illustrations in that thing. Um, okay. My editor's called it a compendium. So anyway, um, <laughs> so like oh, compendium. Didn't even mean to do that. Uh, <laughs> um, so so yeah, that's that's actually combining. Well, it's it's called when glamour meets gratitude. Oh, I'm having to have that great out title. by the end of the year. Yeah, so it's it's combining that. External, when you marry these two together, you know, what, what can you create? And yeah. that's, it's, it forms, I suppose, the basis or the, probably more the, the, the practical um, hand guide, whatever, um, to, to, the, to the course. The course is, um, is more, the, pro, the online program is more, um, it's going deeper. Uh, right. So it's an it's an eight week um, program, and we step you through all of these things. It's it's much more interactive and um, looking. We start with your mindset, 
uh, and then and then it, we really go through you know what are your assets because I, I just I, it's like a retraining it's, a, it's like stop looking out there see what you've got really maximize it and and then we can and then we can start looking at at wardrobe because the way you do whatever you do will will be reflected in other areas of your life so once you can go okay this is what i've got this is exactly what i've got this is how we're going to maximize it blah 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 same with the makeup you know and then we just go through some different exercises on what do you actually like um and and then keep working with those things and looking at the principles of design and and um you know design uh, line form all that kind of thing and um just doing some hands-on exercises so you understand color and line and all of that kind of stuff and then putting it all together and showing up as who you are and uh, allowing it like uh, allowing you yourself to express who you are um and just finding the beauty in that and yeah shining that through so because that's that's what what real beauty is and yeah i really hope to help a lot of women feel that way yeah that sounds fantastic sounds yeah. again so good to talk to you thanks so much for your time thank and, you um, yeah i look forward to hearing we'll have to do another follow-up and hear okay hear more about the book and yeah and how it's all going with the course fantastic thank you thanks bye thanks a lot bye bye